Okay, so here on this job we got, um, we're going to be done about 1,548 square feet of LVP. And um, these steps are going to be getting LVP. And there's a couple landings here, another set of steps here. And um, all of these steps are going to be getting LVP and trimmed out with an aluminum stair nosing that matches the LVP. Uh, this up here is going to be getting carpet. Uh, there is going to be a little section of LVP right here where there's going to be a little sink and vanity area. And right here, this little commode area is also going to be getting LVP. Outside of that, this entire upstairs will be carpet. And the downstairs is what's getting all of the LVP. <coughs> the downstairs and the steps. So, all of this is going to be getting LVP. With the best help in the world, my wife. And we got this great room here <coughs> and another another room right here the bathroom is tiled and another little cubby area here another vanity area right here and there's the shower this is going to there's a, also a commode right there. So, and this room right here. So, we will be here for eight days on this job. And I will progressively, we're going to be putting down underlayment and uh, underlayment everywhere LVP is going, and then we'll. Uh, put down the LVP and then the carpet will be last. Stick around and see how we do. While I'm going over the floor, if I hit a nail, I want to take my pencil I got right here and I'm going to circle that nail head. That way I can come back and beat it down. Um, don't want anything sticking up out of the floor. If it's a little sunk in, that's okay. We don't want anything protruding up. So I'm gonna go over the entire floor with my scraper. Up right there already. I hit a nail, so I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna circle that and I will come back. If you see, I got that circled right there. I will come back and get that after a while, after I get everything scraped. I got this whole house to do. So after I get everything scraped, I'll go around all my pencil marks and beat them down with the hammer. So we can just see a little bit of sheetrock mud coming up and that's it. Everything else is good. Seams that's in the subfloor here. I'm going to take my. This is called an edger. I'm going to take it over all the seams and make sure they're nice and smooth. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can rent one at Home Depot. I think they're like fifty dollars a day. If you don't want to do that, you and you have a belt sander, um, you can use a belt sander. It'll just be a little bit more time consuming. On the bottom here, I got a 50 grit uh, sanding disc, so it's going to eat it down pretty good. And uh, it's dust collection here, so I don't, I don't don't dust out too much. But these things are they're really fast and efficient. So the thing is just keep it moving, so you don't dig a hole in the floor if you sit in one spot too long. Okay. The main thing again that we want to do is just um, make sure the seams are all level. So I'm going to hit every seam in the entire house that's getting LVP and underlayment. Okay, 
so if you'll zoom in right here if you'll see that on each side of the seam has got sanded that lets me know that it is flat if there was a spot on one side that didn't get sanded that would mean that the other side is higher and I need to keep sanding so this is the last process to the um, floor prepping for underlayment and I just want to show you and what it is is cutting door jams and what I do I got a piece of my underlayment that we're going to use and a piece of the flooring and I'm just going to make sure there's no no debris or anything under it that would cause it to be raised up and I'm just going to set it right there right against it and take my pencil and put a mark right there at that it's going to cause it to be just a little bit high higher than my actual uh, thickness here but that's perfect that's exactly what I want you'll see there I got just a tiny gap I'm gonna mash down see there's a tiny gap there between the floor and the door jam and that's exactly what we want if you'll notice right here along the edge of the wall um, I will not butt my underlayment all the way up just in case there is wavy spots in the wall like you can see it close there and then there's a gap here and then it's close here and then there's a gap there so I intentionally leave about a quarter inch space on my wall in here we got a room about 35 foot long and I actually measured from corner to measured from this corner and then I measured to that corner away from the wall um, four, uh, 48 and a quarter inches and I popped me a line and I just followed my line and that kept me away from the wall far enough for um, the wall bowing in and out or whatever like that and it's still close enough that the underlayment I mean that the baseboard is going to cover so that's the reason why I leave a little gap on my edges
because of this gap I've, I've, in that video installers beware I said I'm not going to use this brand anymore well I tried other brands um, you can see in the other video I did of uh, uh, let's see um, I can't think of the title of it it's LVP demo and install or something like that I can't remember anyway I'll leave a link here at the bottom of this video um, about that video so you can check it out and that was a really high quality expensive underlayment I used on that job and they was only four by five sheets of underlayment versus four by eight and even in those smaller pieces you were still getting stuff like this right here so it didn't matter whether you spend a bunch of money on underlayment or you just get what the uh, uh, box stores have you still have the same issues so I figured I was going to go back to this because I was having the same issues and it's a bigger profit for me because I'm, I'm spending that other stuff was almost twice as much I was paying as much for a 4x5 sheet as I am for a 4x8 so you can see the difference that's almost twice as much money for the same amount of product so I thought I would go back to this for that reason because you can see in that video where I leave a link down here that I was still getting gaps and stuff like that so it didn't really matter it's just the way uh, lumber is nowadays a lot of people don't care about their quality of products no more so that is the reason of uh, continuing on using this because it didn't really matter whether I spent uh, $15 for a 4x8 or $15 for a 4x5 I was having the same issues so I chose to put more money in my pocket if you'll notice that I'm working myself backwards um, instead of forwards that way my body weight is holding this flat on the floor as I'm coming this way and stapling rather than that end just flapping and me going that direction like that it's getting a better solid bond with my weight holding it down rather if I was like going that way you can see see that moving so my body weight's holding it flat on the floor so it's getting a good solid adhesion as I'm nailing it here so that's the purpose of backing up and I go I go approximately every four inches and on the seams I'll go about every uh, go about every inch on the seams so I don't want to get too close to the edge whenever I'm running my running my seams if you get like right dead on the edge it'll cause that to flake up and then you'll have a little hole in your board so I try to stay back maybe a half or three quarters of an inch from the edge of my underlayment as I'm nailing staple sticking up just a little bit that didn't get sunk all the way rather it hit a nail hole or whatever the reason anyway I take and circle it with my pencil and I don't want to beat that down with a hammer because uh, I don't want to leave a dent in this this is to keep smooth so I'll uh, sand that off whenever I'm sanding that's the purpose of putting a circle there so it'll catch my eye and I'll come back and sand it but because when I sand it, I'm going to sand the crown off of the staple, I'm going to put another staple right beside it so that it's still got a good hold. I like to stagger my joints and um, I also want to make sure that my seams in the underlayment do not match up with the seams in the subfloor. I also use uh, three quarter inch staples rather than a inch and a half or inch and a quarter or something like that if this staple protrudes all the way through the subfloor as it goes through here it loses its strength uh, the key is to find out the thickness of the subfloor and then get a staple that's not going to go all the way through the underlayment and through the subfloor you don't want it to protrude the bottom side of the underlayment if your prongs are sticking out the bottom side of the underlayment 
your staple is not going to hold as tight as if it stops somewhere in the middle of your underlayment. So use a shorter staple. Um, it's good for that reason and because they are cheaper. But um, if you look up at the manufacturer specs of underlayment and stuff, they will recommend a staple that does not protrude all the way through your subfloor for that reason because it does lose its strength if it goes all the way through. Okay, so this is the end of day two. And um, we have got all the underlayment downstairs. complete. I do got some places where in the doorways such as right here. Let me see. I will fill stuff like that with floor patch. That might be able to, it's not real bad. Maybe a dime will fit in there but anyway I want everything perfect. So I will fill that with floor patch as soon as we get here in the morning and um, while that's drying I will oh yeah I forgot my jigsaw so I had to cut this with my skill saw and cut that circle out there with my skill saw got pretty close so you can tell by looking around the edges it's not the prettiest cut but anyway done okay for done it with the skill saw anyway we got uh, this big room again com it's completed got this other room over here it's all completed and ready to go um, you can see the grain how it's running the boards are running toward that door right there, the grain in it. You can plainly see that. Something I want to point out right here, if I can get down there. You can see my staples are running. The crown and the staples are going across the grain instead of going with the grain. That way the crown on the staples uh, get a better bite. If they are going with the grain, Let's see here. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, anyway, if the staples are running parallel with the grain, it's going to have less of a bite just because the crown is not going across the grain of the wood. Um, then I can't even find any. I don't get every single one of them like that, but I keep that in mind. To have them going across the grain like that so so that it does hold the underlayment better let's see you can see the seams we got about every inch there and about a half inch away anyway I really want to let me see if I can find one that is running with the grain so you can see what I'm talking about. And it'll make sense if you see it. Where are we at? Okay, so obviously this one right here, that staple running with the grain is definitely not going to hold as good as that going across the grain. End of day two. I have not got anything done to the upstairs bathroom yet. Or there's a little sink area up there too that I have not got anything done. Or on the steps as far as installing underlayment. Just this downstairs floor here area. I've got everything done down in this area here. So 
Uh, tomorrow, like I said, I will sand over these joints in the plywood or in the underlayment and mud them and we're going to start installing LVP tomorrow. So this is the beginning of day three. Um, we're going to start actual install this morning of the LVP. First thing we need to do, we got to sand all of our joints, our seams in the underlayment and anything that we circled throughout is staples sticking up we're going to make sure we sand those and get rid of the heads on them and uh, just give you a quick demonstration here again this is a floor edger is what it's called i'll give you a quick demonstration and we'll see what it looks like here Okay, so if you'll see, if you can see right here, this was a little bit of a high spot. Actually, I still need to do just a little bit more on that. Let me do that again real quick. Okay, so this was a little bit high. You can see that the, uh, by sanding it, it knocked this side down flush with the rest of it. So we're gonna carry on. Something really important I wanna point out I've learned from mistakes is that you do not go too deep on your seams. Um, if you're laying a shiny vinyl or something like that and you go, you take too much out, when the light hits it, you'll be able to see your boards will telegraph through because it's going to be glued down so you only want to smooth it you don't want to sand grooves in the edges of the boards that will be a big mistake when the light hits it just right so we got our underlayment down we got us a chalk line popped here I measured what I did just uh, because nobody's perfect I put a straight edge against the wall over there and I measured off of a to get me a straight reference from the bows in the walls. Same thing over there, and then I measured over and popped me a line 10, 10 foot, five inches and a quarter all the way down through there. So I'm gonna focus on this part first. Gonna focus on this part first. That way we can still have a walkway right here. And I got all of my, any little bitty imperfections or anything, I filled them with mud and gone over them with a four inch razor scraper. I got everything as smooth as possible. And now we are ready to spread some glue finally. So, oh uh, yeah. And um, this little, uh, cheap trial I use right here I get these at Lowe's this glue recommends such a small notch in it that um, and I work a lot on concrete so if I spend 10 or 11 12 dollars on a nice one with a nice round handle from the supply warehouse it's going to get wore down in like one job so I don't get many uses out of them because the concrete grinds them down to where the teeth won't leave as much glue as you use. So I just use these and I pretty much get one or two uses out of them and I throw them away. And they're only like $3.50 at Lowe's. So 
I think that's a better deal rather than spending 11 and 12 bucks just for the comfort of a of a handle while I'm doing this it's like makes perfect sense to me to buy these cheapies from Lowe's for this particular kind if I'm doing glue down carpet or something that takes bigger notches then I get the nicer ones with the nice fat handles where they feel good okay because this is a little trial that has little sharp edges under here that get your fingers and stuff but underneath the handle part there so I always will break out my my glove here just in case I get the inspiration to go hee hee plus it just makes me feel awesome when I wear this glove okay so again this product is three different layers I mean uh, three different widths we got a I think it's a four, five, and six. I think that's what they are. Yeah, five, six, and seven inch widths. So we got to keep our rows in order. And um, as usual, we're going to make sure that our very first piece is 100%. As always, if we get it off the whole, every one of these rooms, this whole downstairs, matters um, according to this one piece if we get this one piece right here crooked everything in the whole downstairs is going to be crooked because it all touches so I'm going to be extremely careful here and try to get it right dead on my chalk line before I do any touching or anything that way it don't get stuck too hard and it looks like I might need to just barely push that end right there. Okay. I think I'm good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a rub. Like a rub dub dub. I'll throw my second one down there, a skinnier one. I didn't mean to drop that. I hope it fell straight. And I will show here in just a second how to cut those angles right there at the fireplace. Which there's a lot of different ways of doing it because it's a straight 45 degree angle. But notice I'm right in the center of that and I just let it fall straight down. That way it don't shift one way or the other this way that I'm fixing to show you how to do this is will work on any angle whether it's a true 45 or whatever it is it'll work so I'm going to measure from my point which is going to be my feathers point I got a little bit of play because they're going to put stone on this fireplace but I'm going to go follow my chalk line down and there I'm going to allow myself about an eighth of an inch 39 and a half so I'm going to go it might end up running running off there on the end of the board we'll see 39 and a half And I'm going to measure to my other point. I'm going to use my next piece here as a reference to line my tape measure up to make sure I'm straight. With that being the case, I need to have it on the board, on this, instead of on this, because this side of my tape measure is going to touch down there. If I've had it this side and my this side, if I had my tape measure off of the plank and lined it like this and this side of my tape measure would touch and I would be short so because the right hand side of my tape measure is touching down there I got to be 
on that. Oh. And it is 45 and a quarter. So it didn't run off. Okay, now I'm going to just take and put this right there from mark to mark. And oops, just scratch it. Don't have to get crazy or nothing. And it'll snap on. Okay, now I want to keep this because that's going to be my angle. I don't have to do no more measuring angles on this. I just can use that cut right there for the rest of these angles. Okay. I'll show you what I mean by that. So, I'm going to take one of these skinny ones and my tape measure. Now, Ben's I got this one down, I can just kind of hook on the end of that other one right there and measure. I got 27 and an eighth. So, I'll come here and go 27 and an eighth. Now, I can take my already. angle and because this is the longest side instead of my line this one line this but I want to find my mark right there and line the top and just make sure where this meets the edge of the board is right on my mark and that's going to be the right angle even though it's a different width it's still going to be the right angle so long as I'm lined up here Okay. Okay, so this is what we managed to get done today. Let's see here. And I am kind of disappointed we didn't get no more done than this because it only took like two hours, maybe two hours and a half to, uh, to actually install this much. But the amount of prep again today on the underlayment was just crazy um, I went to do some more extensive uh, prep work I hit all of my joints and my underlayment and everything that had 
anything that was, uh, let's see here, anything that was sanded down enough to have the white showing, like that right there on the tip. See the white where it got sanded quite a bit? Any bit of underlayment that got sanded enough to have that uh, floated over just to make sure that it was super level because there is windows everywhere all around those are going to be glass doors as well and there's windows everywhere and um, even up top there's the world's greatest helper my lovely wife it's, I'm sorry I kind of had your head cut off there a little bit anyway all up top even there's windows all up there and, up here too. and over there yeah and, and up here. Uh, where she's pointing on that part there's light oops there is light coming in everywhere here so I wanted to make sure I got this floor extra extra smooth just because of that so I didn't want any issues with the waviness or anything like that so we took some extra time and floated everything and uh, even went with my little I got a little palm sander little orbiting uh, Dewalt palm sander that I use in my wood shop and I even took it over I even took it over the mud and made sure everything was super smooth so we're not going to have any issues out of this and um, now for sure tomorrow we're definitely going to finish up the downstairs and hopefully I'm sure we can probably get some uh, underlayment done on the steps and uh, maybe even get some of the steps done. I just wanted to make a little point here and um, have people talk about cutting my cuts on top of the existing floor that I've got laid. I just want to show you how I prevent myself from slipping and cutting the floor that's already laid. That way you're not too concerned about it. You don't have to keep a scrap around to, to lay under your uh, double check that because I was talking 41 okay yeah it's an inch off I thought so okay so some people will carry a scrap around with them and they'll make their cut like that so they don't slip off and it kind of protects the floor here but I don't worry about that and I'll show you exactly why okay so um, I got my strap my little framing square on my mark and I'm going to just pull it along and whenever I get close to the end like that right there I take my thumb instead of just not having any control because if it does slip it will come over and cut that so Whenever I get close to the edge, so, ooh, about done right there, I take my thumb and push down on that and kind of pull my knife. I use it like a leg. I just kind of, I'll show you again on this other little piece here. I just kind of gradually pull back with my thumb rather than not having anything grounded to my framing square. That way I've got some kind of control over it and it don't, um, and I don't slip. Let me do another one right there. I don't know if that was very well seen or explained, so maybe I'll show you again. Let me get another skinny board right here. Okay. 
Okay, so once again, I'm going to put my frame and square on my mark and focus on my thumb right there whenever I'm pulling to the edge. Okay, so I've got my frame and square right on my mark again. And at, once again, I'm going to turn this a little, just a little bit more so you can see my thumb. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of walk back with my thumb, okay? I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to do more of it this time. So you can see I'm actually pushing down and pulling like that with my thumb. That way I got control over my knife and it don't just slip. If you'll see that, I can just kind of walk it back to the edge and I can stop right where I want to on the edge without slipping off and damaging my floor. Okay, so this is the end of day four. And we have got the whole downstairs completed now finally underlayment and LVP into another room here still working my little heaters there this propane that guy came and delivered the tank and all that good stuff um, yesterday but it's going to be I think Wednesday before they come and do uh, and get it hooked up there So still keeping the little electric heaters cranked up. And once again, try not to cut your head off this time. She has been wonderful. <laughs> As you can see, all my tools are all gathered everything is cleaned up and it just as soon as I get ready to go so that's awesome and all we lack is the steps and um, one little bitty bathroom, maybe a four by five upstairs and about a four by and maybe a three by four of a little washing, hand washing room or whatever where there's going to be a sink on the opposite side of the wall upstairs and we're going to be done. So we had until Wednesday to do this job and tomorrow is Saturday and Lord willing we're going to finish up tomorrow so I can get back over. You guys have seen me doing some demo on uh, my last few videos of tearing up some carpet and stuff like that. I've still been working on that. That's about 4,000 square feet of carpet tiles. So I can get in on that and get some work in on that since we're going to be done with this a few days early. So that's awesome. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's way too late. I'm way too tired to be doing that. Anyway, day four.